We want to thank you for tuning in to Innovative Business Advisors' presentation of COVID-19, Aid for Sole Proprietors and Independent Contractors. This short presentation is designed to lay out all the programs that are available to you as an independent contractor, sole proprietor, or 1099 worker, and uh, be able to take advantage of these programs so that uh, you can carry yourself successfully through this pandemic emergency. Quick overview of the agenda here. We're going to start by talking about things you can do within your home budget, some of the changes that may have been affected in the law in your particular state and how that will uh, incur to your benefit. Then we'll talk about IRS changes. We'll move into the pandemic 2020 tax rebates and talk a little bit about those. We'll also talk about a new form of unemployment assistance known as the pandemic unemployment assistance that is available for sole proprietors and independent contractors for the first time ever. Next, we'll go over a series of government guaranteed loans that are available to all independent contractors and sole proprietors. And then we'll talk about government direct loans that are also available. And then we'll conclude with an overview into some state and business programs that you may want to explore and take advantage of. So the first place to begin is taking a look at your income and expenses individually. And this may be a time where your income has become somewhat limited, either due to your uh, inability to be able to work um, or uh, for other circumstances that are somehow related to the COVID emergency. We've got a couple of major suggestions for you and then a number of steps that you can take. The first major suggestion we have is check with your state governor's office. Very often you can go to the state website They'll have a separate tab for the governor's office, and typically in that area, there will be press releases and executive orders. You'll want to go to that tab and review the various press releases and executive orders that have taken place within your state. All 50 states are now operating under an emergency declaration, and many governors have taken specific actions to help the residents of their particular states. Familiarize yourself with those, because many of those may help you effectively manage your cash flow as you're, uh, as you're navigating through this emergency situation. The next major recommendation we have for you is for you to call your bank and get a list of all automatic debits that come out of your account. Uh, in the world we're living in today, there are so many of those that tend to accumulate in our accounts without our even knowing it for automatic subscriptions to gyms and other membership sites that uh, we may not be taking full advantage of to things like Netflix and Amazon and other online subscriptions. Banks can very easily give you a list of all of the debits that are coming out of your account on an automatic basis, and then you can review those and determine what are absolutely essential during this period of time, which ones you may want to cancel or suspend, and which ones you need to keep and keep uh, allowing to happen. So take a good look at both of those areas, and that should, uh, should begin to start to help you in your analysis of your current income and expenses. Many states have also suspended evictions and the federal government has suspended foreclosure proceedings on all FHA and VA mortgages. So if you haven't already heard from your landlord, now is a good time to review whether in your particular state if evictions have been suspended and check with your landlord and see if they have got any type of special deferrals that they're allowing for tenants during this emergency period of time. If you have a mortgage on your property, great time to reach out to the bank or servicer, the people that you make your payments to, and find out what type of deferred programs they may have available for you as well. A lot of states have also suspended utilities' ability to disconnect service for non-payment during this emergency period of time. So if you're in a position where you've got to choose between which bills to pay, this may be uh, an opportunity for you to make your decision a little bit easier if you know that they can't turn your lights or water off because of the fact that uh, you haven't paid your bill. And then there are many other programs like um, cable, for example, whereas in the state of Missouri, uh, all of the cable providers have agreed to provide free broadband access for the school year period, uh, which typically is running 60 to 90 days for, uh, for all of us in the state. You may want to check with your state and see if there are other special decrees like that on broadband service, telephone services, or other services. And then finally, for other vendors that you have, you might have you know, people that cut your grass or do your pest control or other various vendors, reach out to them and find out what programs they may have available and be sure and hit, this, hit the pause button if you need to in each of those areas if you're struggling to balance your income with your expenses. We also want to point out that if your household is responsible for making student loan payments, the federal government has allowed all of those to be deferred for up to six months. So it's important to call your lender or servicer in those areas and make sure that you're applicable for that program as well. So now let us move into some of the IRS programs. I think most people are probably well aware that the IRS moved the filing date from April 15th to July 15th, and also the date of any taxes that were due prior to the April 15th 
period. So if you had any uh, amounts due on your return or if you had estimated payments, all of those have been moved out to a July 15th date at this point in time. And as with the, uh, the earlier date of April 15th, interest and penalties will begin to accrue on July 16th. This applies to everybody that files an individual return. It applies to all business filings that may have uh, quarterly estimated payments, first and second quarters have been moved now, and then those that are responsible for self-employment taxes. The other special thing the IRS has done is that if you are responsible for self-employment tax, which is pretty common for independent contractors or, or sole proprietors, they have allowed you to defer up to 50% of your self-employment tax for two years. So you'll only be responsible for paying half of what's due in 2020, and then you can pay the other 25% in 21, and the remaining 25% in 2022. So uh, nice programs that enable you to save some cash during this uh, em emergency period of time. The IRS has also made a couple of significant changes for those that have IRAs or retirement savings accounts, such as 401ks. They have first and foremost suspended the early withdrawal penalty, which is typically 10% for those that need to make withdrawals out of their accounts of up to $100,000. And that typically would apply to somebody that's 59 and a half years old or younger and has the ability to take withdrawals out of their accounts. So right now for the year 2020, there are no tax penalties. They've waived the tax penalties for early withdrawals on the accounts up to $100,000. If you're part of a defined contribution plan, which allows you to take a loan from your account, they've also um, significantly changed the fees and um, the repayment periods for those loans as well. So you may want to check and see what's available under that area. And then finally, for those that are 70 and a half and older, that are required to take minimum distributions out of their IRAs or 401k plans. All of those have been waived for 2020 as well. So uh, for the first time in, in maybe ever, uh, you're not required to take a minimum distribution out of those if you meet that age group. So let's move into the 2020 pandemic tax rebates. Everybody's heard a lot about these, I'm sure, from the national media and so forth. And this is the IRS that's doing direct deposit right now and soon will move over to uh, sending checks to those they don't have bank account information for. But it amounts to $1,200 per individual or $2,400 joint, plus $500 per qualifying child or dependent on your tax return. So, um, that amount applies to anybody that makes under 99,000 single or 198,000 joint, but it does begin to phase out above 75,000 individual and 150,000 on a joint return. So you get the full amount if your joint return has adjusted gross income of 150,000 or less, and it begins to phase out to where it completely phases out if you're at 198,000 on a joint return. The IRS is distributing these in groups from those that have the lowest AGI to those that have the highest AGI. Direct deposit has been taking place over the last few weeks, and it is anticipated that they will begin mailing checks to all those recipients that they do not have bank account information for beginning somewhere in the first week in May. The IRS has also established a website where you can go called irs.gov forward slash get my payment FAQ, and you can enter in your own personal information and find out exactly where your potential rebate stands at this point. And just a quick reminder, this is a credit against the tax that's imposed for 2020. It's an advanced refund, so there will be no um, additional incremental income tax that hits you as a result of receiving this uh, this direct check. So it, uh, it truly is an advance against uh, the tax payments that you're making for the year. Moving on to the pandemic unemployment assistance. For sole proprietors and independent contractors, they've never traditionally been able to draw unemployment insurance. What the CARES Act did was set up a new type of unemployment assistance called the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. And it made those that are traditionally not eligible, those self-employed, independent contractors, gig workers, anybody who receives a 1099, to actually be able to claim unemployment during this period of time. So if you're not able to work at all, you can go to your state unemployment website, make application, designate yourself as self-employed or an independent contractor, and begin to draw unemployment. And that unemployment is $600 a week and it will go for a four month period beginning from April 1st to July 31st. And the other thing that the CARES Act, the federal legislation did was it eliminated the waiting period. So once your application is um, entered and accepted, you should begin to draw immediately on that unemployment assistance. Next, we're gonna move into some of the available government loan programs. And we're gonna talk about three of them, the SBA Express Bridge Loan, the SBA Economic Injury D Disaster Loan, and the SBA Paycheck Protection Program Loan. Sole proprietors and independent contractors are able to take advantage of all three of these loans. So you may wanna take a good look at your specific situation and uh, if you need the money, 
by all means apply to all three of these programs. There's a little bit different in each and we'll describe each of them uh, in more detail for you and hope to give you all of the resources necessary so you can go immediately from watching this recording to beginning to make your application. So the first is the SBA Express Bridge Loan and this is delivered by lenders directly by banks and other lenders. And this is a loan that is a very fast turnaround designed to be able to give you money, put money in your hands within days of making the application. And it's also designed to give you up to $25,000. And it is a loan. Um, it does have a fee as associated with it and it does have interest rates associated with it. But the special provision of this is this SBA Express Bridge Loan is designed to be repaid in full or in part by the proceeds that you receive from your EIDL loan, your Economic Injury Disaster Loan. So typically those that are in a position where they need cash now now, they would apply for the SBA Express Bridge Loan, be able to get immediate cash up to $25,000 within a matter of days. And then when they're granted the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, which typically will take about six weeks to get, then that Express Bridge Loan rolls into the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. So the Bridge Loan gives you some cash while you're waiting on the larger Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Now, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan is an SBA direct product, and we'll talk about that uh, in another slide where that's one that you apply directly to the SBA. That covers all working capital and any other business expenses that you would have recorded on your Schedule C, which would be your sole proprietor, independent contractor, self-employed business return portion of your tax return. One of the other things that the SBA has done now is they have created as a part of that a partial grant or advance which um, that you may receive and elect to receive on your loan. And these loans are for typically longer periods of time. It can actually go up to a 30-year term. So uh, again, it's a loan. It has no fees against it, um, but it can be used for a larger amount and a longer period of time in terms of payback. And then finally, the other government guaranteed loan program is what's called the Paycheck Protection Program. And these are also delivered by lenders, which are banks or other financial institutions. And the Paycheck Protection Program is designed to cover the earnings that you would have had as an independent, uh, independent contractor or sole proprietor. It will also cover any interest that you may have had on existing debt any rent expense that you may have had, and any utility expenses attributable to your business. Um, one caveat here, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, you can only request for earnings of up to $100,000 during the past year. So uh, if you were one of those sole proprietors, or independent contractors that made more than $100,000, you can only use the $100,000 as your base salary for that period of time. But the very unique feature of this is it's a completely forgivable loan. So if you're granted this loan you and you use the funds as designed, you do not have to pay it back. So we'll talk a little bit more about each of these here. But I want to, again, stress how they all work together. So you would use an SBA Express Bridge Loan, which would provide cash for you during the period of time it takes you to get the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. And if you are granted the EIDL loan and also wish to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program, you can also roll your EIDL loan into your Paycheck Protection Program loan as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about each of the aspects of these loans uh, as we move further into the presentation here. So again, the Express Bridge Loan, quick $25,000, quick lit turnaround, literally days from application. It can be used for your general business expenses, which would be the expenses that you would have itemized on your Schedule C. And the way you would apply for that is you can, if you don't have a bank that you're currently working with, you can go to sba.gov forward slash local assistance, find the local district office, the one closest to your address, go to the office website and then on every district office website they have a list of SBA participating lenders. Open that list up and look for those lenders that are authorized for the express loan program and those are the lenders that you'll want to call. So very easy to find which lenders are applicable for that program. Economic injury disaster loan. This is the one that takes the longest to actually receive funding for but it's a, an excellent product. It is also unique in that the way you apply for this is you go directly to sba.gov and apply directly on the SBA website. The application process is very short, shouldn't take you any more than 15 minutes. It's literally check the box and add a couple of pieces of information, which we'll talk about in a minute, and um, you submit online, sign online, and you're done. Now, these economic injury disaster loans are activated by the state's emergency declarations and all 50 states have those in place right now. So they're applicable no matter where you live in the United States. 
the loan amount can be for up to $2 million, and it comes to you at a fixed interest rate for businesses of 3.75%. And basically, you can use the money for anything within your business, ex your business expense category or for working capital in your business. The only thing you can't use it for is lost profits in your business. However, if you're a sole proprietor or independent contractor, generally the profits on line 31 would be your payroll as an owner. And that is something that is allowable under the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. So you need to meet three qualifications in order to apply. First, you got to be eligible as a business. That means you got to be a sole proprietor, independent contractor, and basically file a Schedule C. Um, they will do a credit check, but it's much lower than commercial standards. And really what they're trying to do is determine your repayment ability, and that helps them determine how long they schedule the loan repayment terms for. And they're looking at your pre-disaster condition, not the current situation that you're in, but back in normal times. What would your ability to repay look like? Another really nice feature of this loan is once granted, you have one year of payment deferment up front. So from the time they send you the money, you don't have to make your first payment till 12 months later. Uh, and it's always at a fixed rate. There are no fees, there are no prepayment penalties. And if your loan amount is $200,000 or less, there's no personal guarantees and no recourse. So very nice product that's designed to get you back on your feet and get your business back on its feet again after this emergency. Again, how much can you get? You can get up to $2 million. Typically, the SBA is telling us that in today's environment, it's taking about six weeks from the application to the time you actually get money in your hand. It can be used for all of your general business expenses. And again, it's a direct program. So you go directly to sba.gov and make the application there. The only two pieces of financial data that they are requiring on the online application is your gross revenues and your cost of goods sold. So if you've got your tax returns handy, if you look at Schedule C, line one and four, those are typically the only two pieces of financial data that they're asking you to include as part of your application. So very easy application to make, and we recommend that every sole proprietor and independent contractor take advantage of this program. The Paycheck Protection Program, this is the one we're hearing the most about because it ran out of money so quickly and they are now reauthorizing it and will be open again for lending uh, beginning uh, in a few days. So how much is available to borrow? Well, you can borrow up to two and a half times your average monthly payroll. But if you're a sole proprietor and you're not uh, paying yourself on payroll, your income as a sole proprietor is the Schedule C line 31 net profit or loss of the business. So the way to figure out what your maximum loan amount would be would be to take that line 31 amount, divide it by 12, and then multiply it by 2.5. However, if line 31 is greater than $100,000, the first thing you've got to do is start with 100,000. So you cannot ask uh, as a per employee basis, you can't, uh, you can't calculate any payroll above $100,000 per person. These loans can be used primarily for compensation. It's estimated that you'll want to use 75% or more of the proceeds for your compensation. And then you can use the other 25 or less percent for rent, utilities, or any interest expense that would have been expensed on your normal Schedule C. And very easy to apply. Just go to your existing bank. And um, there are about uh, more than 4,000 lenders throughout the country that are processing these loans. And again, the application process is standard throughout the country. So it's a, a very easy and very quick application process. Lenders only have to verify that you were had your business in business on February 15th, that you actually are a sole proprietor, independent contractor, and they will go through your calculations and verify the dollar amount of your average monthly payroll cost. One word of caution here is there is an application deadline of June 30th for these, so make sure you get your applications in by June 30th. So, Paycheck Protection Program, a couple of things to keep in mind about this. You must use the proceeds immediately upon the receipt of funds. Forgiveness is dependent on how the funds are used during the eight week period of time following the loan disbursement. So if you are granted a loan and you take the money, you have to use the money for the purpose that the loan was designed for. And you have to do that within the eight weeks following the time when you get the money. Then after that eight week period of time, you'll go back to the lender that provides you the loan and you will apply for forgiveness. And if you have used the funds accordingly, the loan will be forgiven 100%. You will not have to repay it. These loans apply even if your business is not open. So even if there's nothing for you to do, you're really, what this is really designed to do is provide the paycheck that you would have earned during that period of time, even if your business is not open and even if there's not work for you to do right now. It's designed for you to continue to pay yourself. But please bear in mind, you cannot draw unemployment while you're using these PPP funds. So 
the way you want to look at this is apply for the PPP, use the money to pay yourself for the next eight weeks. And when that period of time runs out, that's the appropriate time for you to then go to the unemployment office and file for your unemployment compensation if your work has not opened up and you're not able to return to work at that period of time. So show you again how they all work together. The Express Bridge Loan is designed to go into the EIDL, which can then roll into the Paycheck Protection. You know, you can see that uh, the Express Bridge Loan is the most expensive at market, market interest rates. There are some fees associated with it, but that immediately rolls into a fixed rate of 3.75, which can go for a much longer period of time. And then the Paycheck Protection Program has no fees associated with it. It does have a 1% interest rate for the amount that is not forgiven. So if there is some amount that is deemed to be not forgiven, and you would then have to repay that, you would repay that plus an interest rate of 1%, and you would have up to two years to do so. So this will give you some, some overview of how the various loans work together. And then we've also put together a table here for you. As a sole proprietor, independent contractor, all the things we've talked about you're eligible for today. We've shown you on this table exactly what you can get in terms of the amount of money, what the, what the repayment periods look like, and then where to apply. So please refer to this as you're working through the aid programs for yourself. So we talked about the home budget. We talked about the tax deferrals. We talked about the pandemic tax rebates. We talked about being able to use retirement savings or holding off on doing the required minimum distributions. We talked about unemployment assistance, the bridge loans, the economic injury disaster loans, and the Paycheck Protection Program. There are also a whole list of state, local, industry, and commercial aids. It's incumbent upon you to check with your local chambers of commerce, with your state websites, and local business associations. You will find that there are many other aid programs available for you. This is not a time to bury your head in the sand and wait for the sun to come out and things to get back to normal. We don't know exactly how long this is going to last. We've shown you eight specific ways that you can save cash and actually go out and take advantage of state and federal programs that are available. We also invite you to investigate uh, additional local industry and commercial aid. There is a lot out there. So take the opportunity to do so and you will come through this, uh, this emergency period well. If you have got any questions or comments, I'm also providing our information here. Myself and Terry are both the principals of the business. We're delighted to engage with you and answer any questions that you may have. And then finally, we'd also invite you to take a look at our website. We've got lots of various aids available there. And if you need help with your aid programs, you can actually book us for an appointment to help you through that program as well. So we thank you for your attention today. We wish you all the best. And please go out and take advantage of all the aid programs that are available to you. Take care.